it was like that pushing that red button and having the headphones on my head and having the microphone in my hand. It was like, holy smokes. It was like, oh, welcome to the world of sound. And, and um, come on in. I think I was in Amherst, Massachusetts, and I got hold of a, uh, a recorder and a microphone. It was a stereo microphone. And I put the headphones on, and I had the microphone in my hand. I remember pressing that little red button, and then all of a sudden, the birds started singing, the bell started ringing, something was happening behind me. I thought, well, that's pretty far out, you know, that all of this stuff would happen just when I pushed the red button, you know, it was, it was like, it was waiting for me to, and then I, of course, about 10 seconds later, I realized, wait a minute, all of that had been going on all the time. It's going on right now, and we live in a world of sound. Why isn't everybody running around with stereo microphones in their hands? I can't be the only one. But I felt like the only one. It's, you know, we're talking, this is like 1970. It was a slightly different world. I was like a, a frontiersman discovering, a, you know, the, uh, the world of vibration. People started saying I was a pioneer and I wasn't trying to be a pioneer. This is, you know, I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have somebody I was trying to be or emulate. I was just following my ears, so to speak. The first thing that I put out in the world ended up being what I called First, I called it a magazine of oral and visual art, um, and then we called it a portfolio of photography and sound. But it was sound image, sort of an early multimedia of, uh, thing. So it was this way of saying, well, here's a, a context that people might be willing to listen to in terms of sound. And I published three of them, the third one being the best. I went to Brazil. <laughs> But it was a challenge to get the Brazil. I was just, you know, some young, I was in my 20s. Nobody knew me from Adam. I managed to talk the Brazilian government, God bless them, into uh, supporting me uh, to do a portfolio of photography and sound in Bahia. And I spent six weeks in Brazil as the kid in the sound candy shop. I remember the first thing that I recorded I just turned on my tape recorder and I walked into this church. And then, so help me, what happened was every the ceremony was just ending. And so you hear people leaving this church. And then, as if it was orchestrated, all of a sudden, bells started ringing, fireworks started going off, a marching band started coming up. It was like, it was unbelievable. I was in Boston and I heard a sound, and it was the sound of hoofbeats outside in the courtyard on a cobblestone. Now that's fairly specific and fairly magical. And I don't know what it was about that sound, but it like, all of a sudden, I, you know, you don't have to go to Brazil, man. It's like the sounds of Boston. Why not, why not the sounds of Boston? It gave me the idea, well, radio, duh. It's, although I don't think we said duh in those days, but it was a, one of those duh moments, you know? It's like, it's the listener's medium. Why haven't I gone there? Right now, you can get a national audience without you know, lifting a finger. You got it. You don't need a radio station. I didn't have that. So I'm in WEEI-FM. I had my album there, and I said, look, this is what I've done. And listen, I did this, just listen to this, take a second, this is the program director. So he puts a headset on, and um, a month later, I got the call. And I, it was one of those, you know, defining moments of your life. I was in my apartment, I can hear the phone ringing again, I can see myself walking over to pick up the receiver. and and being in that room and having somebody say, Jim, Jim Metzler, yeah, you got yourself a radio series. You got the Bank of Boston, it's gonna sponsor it. You know, it's like, you try to be cool. Oh, that's, that's, that's really, 
That's very interesting. You know, and inside you're going, yeah! You know, this is like a game changer. I never had to teach substitute teaching again. And that was it. I've been like doing radio ever since. This was where I learned the craft of radio, doing it, having my own show. I'm Jim Metzner, and you're hearing Boston on WEEI FM. Mistakes, I mean, that's how I learned. I mean, I've learned, I've made every possible mistake that you can make, but you make that mistake and then you got it. You think, oh, of course. So after like three years of doing this, I had a national radio series, You're Hearing America. Recording on, on Max L tape. tape. Max L, it's, it's worth it. it. And that was how I got started in radio. After that, it was um, Sounds of Science, and I got a national sponsor for that. And I expanded my network and went, started going to public stations, not just commercial stations. Then Pulse of the Planet came after that. I'm Jim Metzner, and this is the Pulse of the Planet. And I've been doing that for over 25 years now, if you can believe that. It's a long time to do one radio show. We've done almost 6,000 of them. I worked with Jim for about three years on Pulse of the Planet. I was an associate producer. Pulse of the Planet is a two-minute uh, audio portrait of something scientific or cultural or uh, nature-based, and it airs every day throughout the world on public radio stations. Uh, I learned a lot from Jim. He is really kind of a pioneer in this format, short-form public radio. You know, I don't want to become the Jim Metzner robot. I want to try to keep reinventing myself and finding fun ways within two minutes to find the freedom within the form. Have I found the freedom within the form in all 6,000 programs? No, but I try. I try. And I think it's our job to, as audio pioneers, fellow audio pioneers, is to tell stories, to make sure that what's essential about life isn't forgotten. So a good program is this mixture of sound and information. And it's also been a way for me to you know, go all over the world. Got funded a lot by the National Science Foundation. Got to go to some amazing places, meet some remarkable people. And having a microphone in your hand is like a magic carpet. I mean, it's a door opener. Something is in sound that's magic. And it can be felt by other human beings and shared. And then you feel like you've done your job as an artist. You've shared that, the magic of sound, that, that vibration. You've vibrated together. I don't really think we capture things. I think we, we're, we're given them. They're gifts. And with every gift comes a responsibility. Even when you're starting, you're in a way beginning an archive. I think part of what I need to do, part of what only I can do, is really put this archive of 40 years of, uh, of then 50 years of sound recording into a, a place, um, a context where it can be heard. Hopefully, with hard work from both Jim and I, we can get this, you know, maybe someone else, if anyone else wants to help us, but um, help us get this done just so that we can have a solid database where all of his sounds are and he can be appreciated truly for his work. I would love for an archive to be a living archive, to be a place where the sounds can be heard. What that would be, I would welcome your ideas. You know, what do you think that could be? And I'm not quite sure where this archive will end up. What would be the best way to respect this material? Might end up at the Library of Congress. That would be pretty cool, maybe. They're interested. I, I got a grant from the Grammy Foundation. I was the only individual this out of 13 organizations to get uh, a grant from them. There's still plenty of material that is begging to be documented. Plenty of stories that people have that are waiting for you. Not everybody still is attuned to the world of sound. We're still sort of slaves to the image. There's still things out there to be recorded. There's, there's a whole world of sound to record it. And remember, 
Every moment is unique. You hear it every day. I was just out the other day and a, flock, a chevron of geese went overhead. I didn't have my recorder. I just listened to it. And I, thought, and I was wishing I had the recorder. But you know, moments like that happen every day. Recording. In the morning when you wake up And your dreams are fading fast For your very first step is taken There's that fear That the magic has passed I'm Jim Messner This isn't the pulse of the 